So apparently there's a bit of an argument over whether energetic cord cutting is even safe. Hey wild ones, it's Cypress and today I'm sharing my cord cutting ritual with you. And I have some thoughts on this disagreement that we'll discuss. As well, timestamps are below to help you navigate the video. But first things first, for anyone unfamiliar, what is an energy cord? The energetic filaments we form connecting and binding us with others serve as energy conduits, much like the mycelium networks that enrich the forest. Some have described them as glowing golden or white cords that connect between the chakras of one soul to another. We form these bonding threads with others when we share time and attention. The more intense or intimate the interaction, the thicker and more numerous the resultant connections. Sometimes human interactions aren't healthy and the energy flow can be one-sided or toxic. Even otherwise healthy relationships can accumulate a tangle of netting that's not serving us. When we find ourselves with unhealthy energetic connections, we can feel drained, exhausted, depressed, unmotivated, not to mention the pain involved when someone shuts us out, cutting off their end of the energetic connection and leaving us to just bleed out all the magic sparkly unicorn dust of our souls. Therefore, it's prudent to perform a cord cutting periodically, but even more so when we find ourselves in a bad situation or a breakup. Left unchecked, those unhealthy intersoul connections can really wreak havoc. So let's do some pruning. There's some disagreement about the best way to excise unwanted energetic cording. Some folks are concerned that cutting the cords is ineffective. They liken it to trimming a weed. Without pulling the whole root, it'll just grow back even stronger. I can see the logic there. I get what they're saying. But energetic cords aren't like weeds. They aren't foreign entities that lodge and root in us. They're more like hair or tentacles. They're formed from within us and then reach out and connect with the cord sprouting from someone else. And we probably don't want to rip out the part of us that creates the cord in the first place. Cording is good and natural. So sure, pull out the root or follicle if that feels satisfying, but let's be mindful of the greater mechanism in the first place. At the end of the day, you can't just dig into your own energetic body expecting to eradicate cording. It's as much a part of us as sweating or growing hair. But the thing that worries me the most about this root pulling approach is this. Without making that cut, you're not actually severing the attachment with the other person. You've now got an intact connection, their cable to your cable, floating around out there that could still come back and reroute itself. Making that slice, going to the trouble of surgical amputation, separates your energetic bits from their energetic bits. It stimulates both energetic bodies, you and the other person, to close off. So even if you prefer to uproot, please cut first. And let's just call a spade a spade. It's really satisfying to make that cut. Okay, but what about this claim that cut cords just grow right back? Your cording function growing out with new tentacles isn't necessarily a problem. If you're forging healthy connections, that's healing. The problem is reattaching to toxic people. Personally, I've done some major cord cutting in years past, and I have never had one of them stitch back in. Although a few have tried. I think why some of these folks are finding cord cutting ineffective is that they are skipping a very important step, which we'll be covering. And not to throw too much shade here, but no cord cutting is going to work unless you really mean it. Codependency has a siren song. Just saying. 
If it's your cables that are causing the problem, if you're the parasite, then that's a whole other thing that you need to look to. So my take on it is this, neither ripping cords out nor cutting cords is going to be truly effective as a standalone act. You must both sever the connection and heal the wound. Of course, at the end of the day, you've got to go with the metaphor that works for your own intuition, because no matter how good the ritual, if it doesn't resonate, it won't do jack for you. For this ritual, you will need a ritual blade to carve out the space and for slicing energetic cords, a wand to set the ward, magical salve for dressing the wounds, a chalice or cup of clear water for internal purification and healing. Optionally, I recommend a candle, perhaps either black or white, for focus and cauterizing, some rope, scissors, and a burn safe dish for symbolic cord cutting. And I'll discuss each of these tools more in depth as they work into the ritual. Make a list of people in your sphere of influence with whom you may have cluttered, toxic, or parasitic connections. And be honest with yourself. Again, codependency has a siren song that's nearly impossible to unmire oneself from. I suggest sorting your list based on the type and severity of ill humor or vampirism flowing through the cords. For example, decluttering stale threads in your connections with good friends is light and easy work in comparison to the much more sober soul surgery of amputating a whole person and that sour relationship from your life. Organize accordingly. A waning moon is the best time for a cord cutting, but the most important timing factor is to be sure you're not trying to cast while in the violent throes of emotional pain. You might as well be driving a Mack truck down a freeway three sheets to the wind. Hex responsibly. I always recommend a soul cleansing bath before any major ritual, but that goes especially for work like cord cutting, where the intuition must be clear and the spirit ready for basically semi-invasive surgery. With your altar space prepared, use a ritual blade, Wittershins, to carve out your workspace and separate it from the rest of existence. Then use a wand, Diozel, to establish the space as warded and sacred. It may seem redundant to be scribing the circle twice, as it were, but with any banishing or purifying work, I like that extra layer of separation between myself and the cacophony. Now would be an appropriate time to call in any deities or guides if you wish. However, for me, a cord cutting is deeply internal and I prefer to rely on my intuition and pure source for direction in this matter. I guess I can pick my own scabs and thank you very much. It is optional, but I prefer to light the candle at the beginning. We're not using it today to send up any prayers, but it helps anchor my focus on my task and radiates an ambiance of sacred work. A black candle is customary for removing and banishing work, and I'd recommend black for removing a vampire or abusive person from your life or for a breakup. But today's ritual is largely routine maintenance for me, and I'm choosing a white candle to focus on the purification of body and soul soul that I'm enacting. Now, sit lotus style, or as close to it as your knees and ass will comfortably allow. Draw down the light. Let it fill your being from crown to root and ground, making sure you've anchored yourself deep into the mantle, into the core of earth. 
Read the first name on your list. In your mind's eye or by intuitive feeling, find all the energetic cords that tether between you. If this is a healthy friendship, assess which cables are healthy and bright with free flowing energy in both directions and which cables are stale, flowing only one way or dark and sludgy. Use your ritual blade to symbolically sever each cord. Be savage. It's okay. If your relationship is solid and you accidentally cut healthy threads, you will both just automatically regrow them. Some people actually prefer to periodically cut all energetic cords, regardless of quality, to allow for more mindfulness in curating and cultivating their energetic connections with others. But despite my own avowed misanthropy, I am not as yet that slash and burn with my energetic relations. And just a PSA here. This is a metaphoric cutting. Actual and literal injury to the skin is counterproductive as it damages both your physical and energetic bodies. And if you find you are tempted to entertain the notion of such things, please seek support through the proper channels. And now back to the ritual. Take your time as you cut. If this is a bad connection you're removing completely, keep in mind this person's most egregious injuries inflicted on you. Not to dwell on the wounds, but to be clear on what you are cutting out of your life. It may help to chant while you work. Let all that ne'er hast loved me unbind and flee the knot. I sever every toxic cord, all sludge, all muck, all rot. Get thee out and get away, I cut thee hence from me. Take thy toxic ass and run, and from here furthest flee. Keep in mind as well that we tend to make more and thicker connections through the backs of our chakras than the front. Be mindful of this and don't forget your backside. I prefer to do this work with my mind's eye, completely focused inward, but you may find it useful to implement lengths of rope and scissors to finalize the cutting away of this person from your life. I am demonstrating it here largely because it works so well for the camera. Silken thread or cable ties makes no matter in this wise. Split thee, fray thee, do not stay. Get thee hence and well away. No more entangled here with me. Thy web I hack, the fibers flee. I cut thee out, I cut thee off, I cut thee from my life, buzz off and do feel free to cut the rope into as many tiny pieces as you wish. Far be it from me to tell you how many times that SOB needs his cable cut. But do stay focused on that cable. Envisioning violence on others defeats the purpose of this ritual. Thoughts of vengeance will only cause more unhealthy cording to form. We're attacking the connection, not the person or any of his parts. Repeat the letting go and cutting process for every single name on your list. Take your time, be thorough, and be prepared for a range of emotions. Some of these cuts will feel refreshing. Some will feel like deep wounds. Every soul connection will have its own tenor and tug on you. Be patient with yourself and just feel whatever you feel. In retrospect, I should have included tissues on the supplies list, which I don't even have because my cheap ass ends up just using toilet paper. After completing your list, recenter and do a sweep of your entire energetic body, looking for any unwanted connections you may have forgotten about or missed. When you are satisfied, you can snip that final piece of rope, cleaning up all those loose ends and move on to the next step. If you are utilizing the ropes, be sure to thoroughly incinerate them, either before moving to the next step of the ritual or later in a safe outdoor area. If you've done this right, your energetic body will be riddled with 
well, bleeding stumps, your energetic body is absolutely equipped to heal this, but it doesn't hurt to visualize and help it along, especially since a lot of us will willfully keep these wounds open and bleeding out when we are suffering a breakup we didn't want. Take a moment to focus on that light you're drawing in from spirit or the cosmos. Visualize or intuit your energetic body doing what it naturally does, cauterizing the openings, knitting them closed, healing your external surface so that you are not vulnerable to unwanted or unhealthy connections. Optionally, you can use your candle to reinforce the process. Skim every surface of your body. Do use caution handling an open flame in this manner. Keep the flame at a safe distance from flesh, hair, and clothing. But I like the imagery of cauterizing the fresh wounds with the purifying seal of fire. Next, I'm using a magical salve and applying it all over my skin. It needn't be a complex recipe. I've simply mixed a few skin safe essential oils into a body lotion formulated for sensitive skin. Imagine as you tenderly work the cream into your skin that you are applying medicinal ingredients to help heal, replenish, and seal up your energetic epidermis. I'm recommending one more step. Sip an elixir for mystical healing. You can use either a ritual chalice or any pretty glassware will do. I suggest using pure, clear, blessed or charmed water. There is no better liquid for symbolic and energetic healing than simple, clean water. So sometimes simple really works best. Sip the water, and as you swallow it, be mindful of the liquid working into your digestive system. From there, imagine it soaking out into the bloodstream and further out into your energetic field. The water feeds the healing process from within, just as the salve soothes and protects from without. Again, take your time here, imagining this process. Your wounds become fainter and fainter as you metabolize the water. Continue until you have finished the water. Congratulations, you've just done some heavy, meaningful soul work. You'll probably be feeling tired and raw and cleansed. Sit with your feelings as long as feels right. Finally, come back to 3D existence at your own pace and release the circle. You could snuff the candle here as it's not actively working to send any messages, but I like to let it burn down anyway. I just like that sense of finality. This is my cord cutting ritual. Wild Things, I hope I've given you something to work with here. I wish you all success in your own cord cutting, and may you find every opportunity for healthier and brighter connections. Until next time, keep the magic wild. Although a few have tried. Okay. Hi, baby. Yeah. Come on. Hi. You're so sweet. Shooting blanks, huh? Sorry to hear that. <laughs>